Hey everyone, it's John. Uh, today I've got to change some strings on a bow, my hunting bow this year actually. Uh, so I'm going to kind of run down the process, uh, show you kind of how we do that, get it all timed back up and, and ready to go again. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is take a couple measurements. I want to measure from my D loop to my peep, and then from my D loop I've got a little kisser tied in here just to, something to kind of keep me honest. Uh, I'll get those measurements, then I'm going to pull the strings off, and uh, I'll probably get back to you when we're getting the strings back on it. Alright, so from the D loop to the edge of that peep is six and three quarters right on it and my little kisser thing starts at an inch and a half and goes up about three sixteenths get that with a spider in it I like the new Matthews axles where you unscrew them because they fit the top hat system in there so there's a lot of adjustability in it. And you're just pushing that through? Just push the axle through, yes ma'am. You can take it out. The cam will lift out of the spacers. The reason you have to do that is this yoke system that Matthews uses to keep the cam torque down or the cam lean down, you have to take it off the pulleys on the cam itself. And what I do when I take stuff off is always try to wrap it around something or clip it to something so it doesn't untwist. That way you keep the same twist count in your strings. Why is it important to have the same twist count in your strings? I'm going to use this set for a backup set, so if I have to put them back on, I know they'll at least be close to being right back in time. Just making sure the twist and the yoke are even on the same sides here. Oops. Like that. I'm going to pull it up and seat it in this plastic piece, which will help align it. And then the control cable goes through and loops back through itself. We'll put these back over the cam pulleys and you kind of got to watch these when you go to unpress the bow because if they're not seated in there they'll cut themselves. Slide that axle back in there to keep the cam on it. You can see that one yoke is already pulled up off that pulley. So you just got to make sure they stay set when you unpress the bow. Right now, it's not important. We go back through the roller guard. This on the cam for right now, we'll be taking it off here in a minute again. But it goes on the cable stop on the cam there. Mm -hmm. So we'll leave that cable on there just to the cam over. So you get a new string, especially if you get a zebra string from Matthews, they mark where the peep goes in them with a piece of different colored thread. So that also tells you that that's going to be the top of your center serving or the top of the bow string. So we'll put that part towards the top. You want to make sure that the loops are all fully open, you don't have any crossed threads in it.
and it's not abnormal for a new set of strings to go on slightly tighter than your old set because they lose their stretch after a little bit. So we'll make sure we have all the yolks right. Pressure. This is what I was talking about the yolks being off. You gotta make sure it's up on that pulley. Another good idea anytime you put strings on is always check all your loops and make sure that they're all fully on their posts. The string loop, the cable loop, and since those attach to the ABS system, the bearings there. Same thing on this side, we're going to check our string loop, it's on. Our cable loop is on the post over here. We're both on the pulleys over here, so we're ready to take the pressure off the bow. Let the strings pull their own tension. Anytime you change strings, you have to set the cables or you've got to draw the bow and then let it down. What that does is it allows the cables to ride in the, the uh, cable grooves on the mods and stuff, and it just sets them to where the timing marks will line up for you and everything else. Always be very careful doing this. You do not want to dry fire the bow. I can tell those are a little off already because the top stop hit before the bottom one. And sure enough, we have the bottom cable that's in its timing mark pretty close. And you see the top one is riding up at the very top of that circle. So we're going to put a couple twists in that top cable to pull that cam around just a little bit. Get the pressure off. You can take the string off the cam and let it come around to make it easier to get to that cable. We're going to put two twists in it. That's kind of just an educated guess. On this cam system, whatever you do to this cable slightly affects this one as well, but it won't do it nearly as much. So we should get this one pretty much lined up, and then we'll make sure that our bottom one is still lined up as well. A little wax in there. We're going to check all the loops once again to make sure they're where they're supposed to be and seated. windows. The cable's in the middle of that one. And that cable's in the middle of that one. Let's set it one more time. We'll loosen the cord on our limb drivers so it'll come up the top. through the burger hole. It's actually just a little bit low. Still a hair low.
the middle of the burger hole. Now we level. That one's level. So that's where the D loop needs to be. So when I tie a D loop, I always try to mash out the tip of it a little bit. Kind of feather it out. It'll make a little bit wider ball on it for you. And take your time heating this up. You don't really want it to catch on fire. You just want it to get good and melty. And mash it down just a little bit to widen it out. You want to mash it out. You don't want to mash it down too far because you can push the melted stuff way down over the cord and it'll just break off when you tighten it up. And we're going to heat it up a little bit more just to kind of round the edges. So on a right-handed bow, you always start the D-loop on the shelf side, put it up against the string and you just wrap it around. Then it'll go under your first piece, then back around the string the other way and back in the hole. You see it kind of ties through itself there. Pull that down. And double check our arrow level. We can come up just a little bit. I'm gonna go just a hair past level because when I tighten that knot, for some reason, it tends to pull it down just a little bit. Now, because I have a 31 inch draw and that string comes way back, those knots will squeeze, the knots will squeeze together in this D-loop if I don't put a collar down in here. So we're going to tie us a little short collar in there. So when I'm shooting this, I'm going to be shooting lighted knots. And they're a little bit thicker than these knots. So we're going to give you just a little extra room down here on the bottom. You know, if somebody would silence their phone, it would probably not keep going off in the video. <laughs> Yeah. Pull that down tight. Turn the ringer off. So there's a knot on that side. We'll come over here. Tie a little knot. We want the string to go just under itself. Come over here. And tie that again. So you can see the three individual strands of thread right there. So that leaves us two gaps, one between these two strands, one between these two. So this knot, I'm going to tie it just like the other one. But when I cinch it down, I want to make sure I cinch it down into that bottom gap. Right in there. And pull that one tight. Do the same thing on the back side. This is the side you can't see. But I'm trying to build that up just a little bit. I want it two thread deep instead of one thread deep. Okay. Square knot, cinch it down, take the arrow off. Cut those fairly short, not super short, but fairly. I want them to burn fast, so when I hit with the lighter, I don't burn this knot, just these little threads right here. See them burn down in there, and just kind of mash them in. So now then, to finish this, I don't remember the first knot we did this way against the thread. This knot, we're going to come to the opposite side. It's going to pull this way. Back through there, pull it to just under that collar, go back around. And there's several ways to tie a D loop as far as how you set the thread up. I just leave it long and cut it down to where I want to, about the length I want it to be. Trial and error, and, and the few years of doing this is where you get to the, the number you want, but I'm going to cut it right there. Again, we're going to kind of ball that end out with the back of the ladder. Got a little breeze going down this side of it. There we go. So 
we're gonna kind of melt that down. We're gonna take our time. We don't want the flame getting too close to the D loop itself. Tamp it just a little bit. You see how okay, good little mushroom head on the end of it there. Set that end in there just a little bit, get it started. Then you can use your Viper D loop pliers if I can remember where I set them. Right there. I'm just gonna pull that tight. And that's about the size I like my D loop. Now that we have the D loop set, before we measured up to where the little kisser button was and to the peep. So we're gonna remeasure up to the peep, get it set in there, and then we'll tie a kisser on it. Since we have the D loop in place, now we're gonna measure back up to the same measurement we had before. It's almost like I pre-did that, but that's at six and three quarters right there. So I know when I put the peep in, I know when I put the peep in, then I want the top edge of it to be about right there. All right, the reason these strings come with this marker thread in here is it actually separates the two string bundles in half. That way you know when you put your peep in, you're putting it right in the middle of the string. So we're gonna make sure that we get the string, all the bundles in the groove on the peep. And they are. We're gonna take most of the pressure off this. We're gonna leave just a little bit of pressure on it in case we need to move that peep around. You don't wanna move it if it's real tight in the string. Go ahead and get the indicator out of the way. We'll measure up to the peak from the D loop. So the very top edge of that peep should be at six and three quarters. So we need to move it just a little bit. A little far. So we've already measured from the uh, D loop up to the peep to make sure it's in the right spot it is. So we're gonna tie it in now. When I tie my peeps in, I always take a piece of the tag in and just kind of set it over the string that way. I'm gonna wrap this string around it. Around it one time there. Two times three. Once it gets to where it'll kind of hold itself, you don't have to hold it anymore. But. Four, five, six, seven times around. I'm gonna slide it down a little bit, slide it up about where you want it, and I pull that tag out of the way and I back wrap that by three times two. All right, snug that up. I'm gonna hold pressure on that with my index finger. And that's just going to keep it from unraveling while I pass this one through here. I always do three times on mine. I'm trying to get that caught up in there. And then you go in front of the peep. Now I'm going to turn this peep around so you can see. Where that goes in that groove, I'm gonna pull that back through to where it's snug and tight in there. I'm gonna leave it in there. I'm gonna go around one and a half times. I'm gonna make sure that on my second pass, I catch that tag line out of there. That's gonna help secure that in. And this comes up through. Oops. And then we're gonna pull that back to that thread there and you see I braced the peep so the peep wouldn't move. Now we're going to continue that back up through the back side and then we're going to pull that up against those threads once again. That's going to lock that in. So now you have to keep tension. It's going to keep itself wrapped. And then on this side we'll go up. There's one. There's two, there's three times. I'm gonna even those out. They've all gotta be evenly spaced, uh, especially if you're Jake and Carol. I'm gonna go around one, two, three times. Pull that down in there tight. Get those a little more perfect. Okay, so the way you end this serving is we're gonna take the string, and we're gonna go over the string here and wrap under it. Now I'll show you what this does here in a second. We're basically going to unwind here as we're winding this one around. It's going to go around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times there. We're going to come back down to this end. We're going to tuck it under 
We're gonna roll over it to hold that steady. Now as I'm wrapping, you can see I'm wrapping over this, it's unwrapping from this side. All right, so now that we got that all unwrapped from the other side, we're gonna pull that snug and we'll get some hemostats and tighten that up. All right, so always clip it in the hemostat and then roll it down a little bit. And what that does is it'll kind of pinch this off so it doesn't slide out. And then just pull that snug, and I pull them pretty snug. But that'll keep the peat from being able to move up or down. Same thing on this side. You can see there's a little gap kind of right in here. We can just pull that down, and then when we snug this down, it'll cinch all that up. I'm going to cut these tag ends off to about, I don't know, 3 sixteenths of an inch, a little over an eighth. And then, we'll melt those down with a lighter. I'm just going to keep it away from the string as far as I can. Just get that string to melt down and then push the end over. Same thing back here. Push that end over and there you go. Now that'll keep the peat from moving up or down in the string. It uh, locks it in, keeps the strands even on both sides. All right, so now we're measuring for that little kisser button I had on there. Not everyone uses a kisser. I just started with this bow, actually. Uh, just trying to correct a form thing I've got going on. So that was my inch and a half mark. So just like we were doing when we put the collar here in the D-loop, we're gonna tie knots on either side of the string here. I'll pull that in before I cinch it down. I want to measure it again and get it right where I want it. All right, so we're going to start it at an inch and a half. Now this one, each pass is going to go up because I started at the bottom of where I wanted it. So that one's right above that one. All right, so unlike this smaller collar down here where I was trying to keep it neat and small, I want this one to be big enough to feel it kind of like a kisser button. So I've built it up pretty heavily right there in the middle. I'm gonna tie us a square knot here to terminate that. Goes down. You see, I actually put that where the string melted in and everything on top of that. And that way it's kind of towards the back because my mouth will be on this side of it. That way I'm not hanging up in there. All right, now we get to shoot it. All right, so we've got the strings changed. I like the way it looks a lot better with the red strings on it. It's a personal preference, flow green, flow orange, whatever you like. Don't be afraid to customize your bow. Give us a shot and see how it works out. There you go, shot all right. All right, if there's anything that you saw that you're not sure if you could handle or if you could do, uh, by all means, take your bow to a professional bow shop. Uh, if you have a press, if you have the know-how, YouTube is full of videos on how to do the same stuff. Uh, I mean, don't be afraid to tackle it if you've got the will. If you don't have the will, let your professional handle it. We'll be glad to help you out and get you taken care of. Uh, if you like these videos, we appreciate you watching. Uh, Give us a like, the thumbs up button, subscribe, uh, leave some comments in the bottom. Tell us how we did, what we think we did wrong, what we did right. Anything you did or didn't like, we'd like to hear from you. We need some feedback so we can make these things better for y'all. Thank you very much.